Hello, hello. Now I did promise you guys I was going to feature some positioning guides on cruisers. And in this case, we have an old favorite of mine, the Mogami. Now, I'm obviously running the Mogami with the 155mm guns because I absolutely love the sheer DPM you can put out with this. And the matchmaking is incredibly rough. It's tier 10 matchmaking. They got multiple very strong DDs. They got an Alaska DD combo uh, division as well, which is very, very strong. And more importantly, Mogami well, is a supposedly a heavy cruiser, which means I have 27 millimeter upper belt and deck armor, but the enemy team has four battleships that overmatch 27 millimeters. 27 millimeters can only bounce 380 millimeter guns, like for example, the Tirpitz, but all the other guns on the enemy team, the Ayava, the Montana, the Kurforst, all of them can easily overmatch my armor. So in terms of gameplay, we're honestly going to play this more like a light cruiser. Generally, that's how you want to play Mogami anyway. One of the fundamental roles that you need to understand when you're playing a cruiser, especially something like a Mogami, your key role, your key strength is the fact that you have really, really good damage output. Especially here, when I'm running IFHE, which means with the Mogami 155mm guns, I can punch through 38mm of armor which means Iovan and Montana are two ships I'm absol absolutely going to look to farm because that 38mm deck armor will not be an issue for this HE. I started pushing towards the side, but the Petra Pavlovsk pushed up. You can see him on the minimap, and I'm instantly starting to disengage from this flank. There is no point for me trying to push too aggressively into a Petro. My Oster Jutland is trying to scout a bit, so I'm just going to see if I perhaps can get vision of a potential DD trying to push around the flank and maybe help my DD win this battle. But this is already looking too sketchy for me with a Petro going dark and Oster Jutland slowing down, so I instantly decide to abandon this flank. Don't push into situations that you can't control. Especially not when up tiered. When you push into a Petr Pavlovsk, that is a situation I can't control. Because the second I spot him, he's going to be able to spot me with radar. And I can't trade with him. I don't do any damage to his 50mm plating. And his AP absolutely eats me alive. And there was eye of a support. I don't know if they have a DD there. Basically, there's a whole horde of unknowns on that flank. And when you're playing a squishy cruiser, you never ever want to push into unknowns. You want to move with certainty. You want to be sure if I go here, the risks I'm taking are minimal. Because in a cruiser, what you want to be doing is dealing the maximum amount of damage while taking the minimal amount of damage in return. That is how you play a cruiser. In a battleship, you can push out and you can trade. You don't want to trade in a cruiser. You want to trade unevenly every single time. Deal damage without taking any in return. My Massa is pushing this flank. So I'm just going to chill, I'm going to see, maybe he'll grant me vision. And if he grants me vision, then I can do what I do best, which is deal damage to support him. Uh, this is classic cruiser positioning. Using the terrain, using a teammate battleship to provide vision. Uh, if I had radar, I would be closer to the island, of course, so that I could radar any potential DDs that might be pushing. But because I don't, and my main role as Mogami. One of the reasons I like showcasing Mogami is Mogami has one very, very simple role in a game, and that's A, staying alive, B, dealing as much damage as possible while staying alive. And it's a lot harder than it sounds, because Mogami, 27 millimeter plating across the board, a huge citadel and just a very easy ship to punish because of the weird citadel shape, shape that means you kind of eat citadels from every angle. Mogami is kind of like the Pensacola in terms of survivability. Everyone loves shooting the Mogami because it's so easy to kill. The firing angles, as you can see, aren't the best either, so you have to give a lot of broadside. I'm trying to reverse out, trying to get some vision here, trying to see if I could perhaps get some damage in on this Iva, perhaps get some pressure in on this Petro, but it looks like they are playing very, very safe, which isn't really a problem for me. We have the cap advantage, we have the DD kill advantage. There is no need for me to go on some sort of gung-ho adventure and push up this flank. That's completely needless. That's risking my ship for probably very little gain, if any gain at all. One of the great downsides of the Mogami is the lack of range. I only have 15.7 cam range, whereas these battleships can easily shoot, the Stalingrad next to us can easily shoot. Being up tiered in a low range cruiser like the Mogami is difficult. You can spend, in this case, I've spent five minutes in this match, I haven't done a single point of damage. This is okay. 
You don't need to panic like, oh no, it's five minutes, it's it's quarter of the game and I've done no damage. This is going to be the worst game ever. No, this is what most cruiser players do. And that is they get too antsy, they get too impatient, and then they kind of suicide him. And there's no need for that. Honestly, just experiment with just trying to survive. It will improve your cruiser gameplay significantly. With the Estelle and securing the cap and the Petro being so far back, uh, I have a fairly good idea of where the enemy ships are, which means I can now push into a more aggressive position and hopefully finally start using some of that firepower that I spoke about earlier. Turpitz looks like he's gonna start pushing in, and that's when we start shooting. I'm instantly detected though, which surprises me and tells me exactly where the Benham is. The Benham is somewhere in the center of the cap. That's why he spotted me. Or alternatively, it could have been the Iowa moving down south, but I'm gonna guess it was the Benham sailing around. So the idea here is to try to find an angle to deal damage. I don't need to push up. We have two cap, two cap advantage. The enemy needs to come to us. Play it safe. Try to find angles to farm damage. Usually when your team gets an advantage, they try to look for ways to lose that advantage. I have a spots me, so I start reversing behind the island, and but I realize it's not going to succeed, so I instantly accelerate again, and I angle away, trying to play angle against any potential targets. The I have up pushing up caught me by surprise, but we instantly react, we disengage. This is too dangerous for us, Mogami cannot survive under pressure, any incoming fire is potentially deadly, we instantly disengage. They all try to take pot shots at me, but that's fine, that's what you should always expect. If you're spotted in a Mogami, a battleship will try to kill you. I'm trying to find a uh, position here, and I do find it, so once again, slow down. I'm once more undetected. This is fine. I didn't take any damage, I managed to evade any of the incoming volleys, and now we're gonna start reversing, trying to look for that position to deal damage safely again. That is, I keep prioritizing that because I've seen so many cruiser plays lately, far too aggressive. They suicide in, they, they, they talk about bravery and they talk about balls and they talk about all these things, but what I see is sheer stupidity. That's not how you play a cruiser. We're seven minutes into the game. I just broke 10,000 damage. That's perfectly fine. I, am, I get radared by the Petro, but I know it's a Petro Pavlov, so I just full reverse, and if I see anyone start targeting me, I will turn in, but it looks like none of them targeted me, they didn't have time during the Petro radar, so I just keep putting in damage on the Ayava. This is what the Magami does so well, especially with IFHE. He might have gone dark, I don't care, I know which way he was going, and battleships don't handle that well, so I start, I even blind fire where he's going, and in fact I score six hits there, and I keep blind firing where I suspect he might be heading. I even pop the fighter plane, not to protect against any carrier, but just to potentially grant vision of any of these enemy ships. Only landed one hit with that blind fire, trying to get some fires in or some additional damage as he goes behind the island. It looks like, well, this is a clear-cut win, but games in World of Warships are rarely uh, that clear-cut if you get an early advantage. Because players have this kind of urge to win harder, and it tends to lead to some very, very questionable moves. Also, for some reason, my Stalingrad is in our spawn and my Jutland is in our spawn. Some extremely questionable positions, which means that we're actually losing a lot of information and a lot of map positioning. So this game is actually far from over. Even the score, even though the score might imply it's over, um, the amount of positioning my team is giving up right now is gonna become a huge problem. And the booster gets deleted in the center. And once again, I keep doing what a cruiser does best. Sitting behind an island, shooting, 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 shooting. This is what you want to be doing. I, I will. I serve no one by pushing, trying to push up somewhere there and dying. I need to conserve my health because this game is once again gonna continue for a good while. My Montana pushes up to brawl the Petro, which, unless he deletes him instantly, might be a very, very dangerous move indeed. The Petro citadels the Montana. And I need to start providing supporting fire because obviously the Montana is watching this rush big time. I'm giving a full broadside to the Petro because I'm still undetected. There's a risk that I will be spotted here. I need to see where his guns are pointed. They're pointed away from me. That means I still can shoot him safely. Note that I'm making sure to keep my nose against the Iva because as I mentioned, when you're spotted in a Mogami, when you're spotted in a cruiser, expect battleships to shoot you. Always. I'm trying to angle, I'm trying to mitigate the damage, but at this point I am expecting to get chunked because Mogami armor is so pitiful. I dodged the first volley, I think from the Iowa, but there's still the Izuma left, potentially the Montana left, 
and I still have a long way to go before I get this Petr Pavlov skill. I'm getting a lot of supporting firing in here, potentially allowing my Montana to win this fight. Uh, I'm trying to reverse even away from the Iovas range, but 16,000 damage straight for the north. I was perfectly angled, uh, and it was only an Iowa, not really the biggest threat at this tier, but he almost took half my health in a single volley. That's what I mean about trying to avoid being shot at at all. In the time it took me to kill that Petro, however, look at the score. My team has lost half their ships. The enemy ship, the enemy team actually has a ship advantage. The enemy team is pushing super aggressively into the center. We are suddenly in a lot of trouble. My team is completely out of position. And an easy win is now looking like potentially a significant loss. And if I had thrown my ship away, there would be no way to recover this game anymore. But I still have 23,000 health left on my Mogami. I see what the enemy team is doing. I send one set of these 10 km torps um, towards the center, since I think the Montana is going to angle either against the Stalingrad or just going to push south. Whereas the Iowa looks like he wants to push into C and potentially secure the C objective. So I basically land, launch first, you launch your torps. Don't shoot, get spotted, then launch your torps. That's a guaranteed way to give too much broadside and get deleted. You launch your torpedoes while you're undetected, while they don't expect them, while they don't know they're coming. And then when you have given them a fair time to travel, like here, that's when you can start opening up, start putting in some additional damage. At this point though, my torps look so good on the Montana, I'm not even gonna bother shooting. I break his engine, cause a flooding, he gets deleted by the Stalingrad, so that's one part of the problem dealt with, and then I start putting pressure on the Iowa. The reason why I'm shooting now is because Montana died, and Montana was the only one who could spot me, which means I'm once again doing what a cruiser should be doing, I'm undetected and dealing damage. More importantly, I'm starting fires, and he's damage conning them while my torpedoes are in the water. I stop shooting again, I'm detected. There's no point risking it. I can see my torpedoes are gonna finish the job. Why would I risk being shot at in the last second by him? There is no benefit to it. Health is a value that you need to conserve just as anything else in World Warships is. For some reason, people can be careful with conserving their smokes. They can be careful with conserving their radars, their speed boosts, their reload boosters. But health is something that they are so comfortable throwing away. And I've never really understood this. Health is what keeps you as a fighting unit. The more health you have, the more plays you can make, the more dangerous, risky moves you can make, and the bigger your potential playmaking ability is. We have killed the center pressure, I have a Massachusetts pushing up here, so once again we're moving back towards the island, trying to find an angle where I can potentially shoot this Izumo, potentially support my team. This is by no means a one game yet. The enemy ships are scared. They have an Izumo, he overmatches my armor. They have a Cold Force, he overmatches all my armor and he's extremely resistant to my HE. And they have an Alaska and a Venezia, both brutally strong against my ship. I'm trying to ping, trying to get my Esther Jotland, who's done a bit of, bit of a tour, trying to get him to understand that he needs to go secure the objective for the team. Because we really need to start gaining some points. Because, well, at this point we still have an 80 point lead. But that's not going to last if they have two points ticking and with potentially my teammates dying. The Ester Jutland finally understands and starts turning in towards the objective and starts securing it. As long as you hold cap control, as we did in the early game, you can play safe. If you don't have cap control, at some point you will be forced to push in and play aggressive. And in a Mogami, in a light cruiser, or in a cruiser in general, that's not something you want to do. There are exceptions, like the like of Stalingrad and Petra that has the armor uh, and tankiness to push in, but most of the cruisers, they rather want the enemy team to push into them while they are in a position to kite away. Because when you kite away, well, you see, I can use terrain to farm them, I can drop uh, preemptive torpedoes where they're going, and this is not with a concealment build. Keep that in mind, my concealment is 10.5, I'm running the position. rudder shift on the Mogami, not the concealment. So, uh, I, I, even then, I was still able to use my 10 km torps on two different battleships, because the enemy team was pushing into me. And it's always, always an advantage if you can force the enemy team to play aggressive towards you, instead of having to do the other way around. Speaking of that, the Zoma is pushing up, so I start shooting and I instantly start angling away. I want to be in a position where I can easily disengage and not in a position where I might be forced to sit nose in. Izumo targets me, decides no, I'm not that tempting of a target because there's a rune 
sailing who was caught nose in and is now forced full broadside as he tries to disengage and he becomes a very juicy target for all of the enemy team i'm trying to tell him to get back he's far too overextended as a cruiser he shouldn't be playing that aggressive as a cruiser especially against the stuff that they have but uh, he's probably going to be dead by that crossfire whereas me on the other hand well I'm kiting away, I'm dealing damage, and I'm putting a lot of pressure on the enemy team, while at the same time maintaining a lot of angling. I'm tempted to stop shooting, because there's potential two targets that can shoot me, but I'm angled so well against most of them, and Izuma has used his damage con, so I think it's more important here to try to secure the kill for my team. I am, however, sailing towards this island here, because if I can, breaking line of sight and using islands to my advantage is what I should be doing. That's what good playing a cruiser looks like. Always, always look for an opportunity to break that line of sight and get yourself in a position where you're undetected and you can just free farm. Because that core force, he can easily kill me from there. I do, however, manage to break line of sight behind the island and I instantly start slowing down. I also see the core force shells, so even better reason to slow down. His shells go wide uh, and land in front of me. I don't... I managed to finally get behind the island, there was a brief time I was looking for that position where I can sit undetected, and this is where of course we full stop. Why wouldn't we? Optimal cruiser position. Able to farm a ship without being shot at. These are the situations, the positions you should look for. At this point I'm keeping an eye out on Kurfurst and uh, my range. If he enters my range, he will grant vision for the enemy team, but that will be far too late because I have already picked up um, the Izumo. There's the Jotland, he will easily kill the Kurforst in a 1 versus 1, as long as he doesn't suicide in. There's 3 minutes remaining, so I pop fighter plane to get a vision, some vision of this Venezia, and I look for opportunities to support my Massachusetts. Once again, we drop the torpedoes while we are undetected and we can't be seen. And then we start looking for the possible Venezia. He's behind the island, so I instantly shoot. Because once again, if he's behind the island, he can't shoot back at me. These are the op opportunities you want to be looking for. I get another volley off before he comes around the island. And now that he's coming around the island, well now we wait and see. His guns are turned the other way. I am tempted to take this shot, and I will in fact go for it, because the way he turned, his guns will be pointed the other way, so he can only use his front guns, and he even has AP loaded, which is even better for me, because I can just angle against that low caliber AP, and take very little damage indeed. Meanwhile, we continue to just pour in this damage. You do fantastic damage against, well, basically everything with IFHG Mogami, but cruisers in particular, if they can't trade well against you, they will melt. Venezia is forced to use his smoke. I'm keeping an eye out. Is he going to try to rush me? Because we don't want to get stuck in battle. That's the worst thing that can happen in Mogami. You get stuck in battle. You want to use Mogami's speed. You want to use Mogami's concealment. You want to do this kind of hit and run. Take a break between shooting. Go behind terrain. Take a break. Drop torpedoes. And then open up again from another All position. Safe. You don't want to be in these extended non-stop firefights. Where eventually you will eat that huge volley. And you will go down. Meanwhile... Alaska is pushing the center and this Venezia looks like he is trying to push through the gap. So I'm trying to look for an opportunity to this time play aggressive because if he tries to go nose in against me, well, at this range, he doesn't get really the pen, the angle that he needs for the sap, and I have a Massachusetts supporting me. He pops up and it looks like he is going for the Massachusetts. I angle in against potential sap volleys and I get huge HE hits on him. He is, however, too focused on the Massa. I cancel my turn, that is the advantage of having that fast rudder shift instead of running concealment. Your rudder shift is something like 4.3 seconds, so you kind of handle like a DD. You can quickly cancel and angle against any potential threats. I'm trying to see if he's going to turn around or if I can get shots in on the Alaska, but it looks like this Venezia is committing to this push. I'm hoping the Massachusetts will just kill him, but there is a risk that he will mess it up. So we're going to do a full turn and basically cut him off so the Venezia can't escape this way should he win this trade. It also allows me, once I have killed this Venezia, to potentially use the terrain, the island here, to farm the Alaska behind the Venezia. So we're planning ahead, trying to use terrain and stealth to our advantage. 
getting some hits in on the Venezia, starting a fire, and this helps the Massachusetts finish off the kill. The Alaska can potentially kill the Massachusetts, but once again, we are in that position I just mentioned. I'm full stopping again, slowing down, because I'm in a perfect position to farm this Alaska to death. The Venezia kills off the Massa, but the time ticks out, which is a bit of a shame, because I could probably have quite easily farmed this Alaska, once again, while undetected from behind an island. Note that when this game started, we were, what, five, six, seven minutes into the match, with basically no damage dealt whatsoever. This game ended, 206,000 damage. Why were we able to do this damage? Because we stayed alive. We remained as an active fighting unit, and once the game started turning, we were able to prevent it from turning into a loss. That's why you don't throw away your ships. That's why you don't, don't throw away your DDs, and more importantly, you don't throw away your cruisers. A cruiser, the less ships are alive, the more powerful a cruiser becomes. Because there's less ships that can spot you, less ships that can cause crossfires, and more opportunities to use terrain, the way I was using it, to just farm, 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 and deal damage. 308 hits, 5 torpedo hits, 2 incaps, 2 destroys, 11 fires with IFHC build, which means our fire chance isn't really that good. Team score wise, 2700 base XP in a tier 10, tier 10 game. The Massachusetts did it quite well, uh, coming in second, but overall this was... If we had not been alive, if we had played too aggressive and got ourselves killed, this would almost guaranteed have been a loss. This is how important it is to, you to, to not throw away health for no reason. Always, always calculate the benefits and don't push into situations that you can't control or you don't know what you're pushing into. Pushing into the unknown in a cruiser is always stupid because if there is a hard counter waiting for you then, there, then you just die. There are some exceptions with that, of course, which is, for example, if you're playing an Italian cruiser and you have that smoke to escape with. And that's why the next video I feature will be the Brindisi, because when you have the smoke, you can play a bit differently when it comes to cruiser positioning. Regardless, detailed report, 308 hits, 129,000 damage, 5 torps, 50k, and the 11 fires, even though 11 fires is nice, didn't actually give me as much damage as they could have, only 27,000 damage. You could get a lot more with potentially far more impressive damage here. But then the actual shells shot at us, or the actual shells we ate, were 15 AP shells. The rest of the time, we avoided them. And this is something that you should absolutely take pride in. If you're dealing a lot of damage, the less damage you take in return, the better you have positioned that game. Regardless of what anyone tells you, if someone comes in and says, Oh wow, that was so cowardly, then you can just tell them, Wow, you're a really bad player. Because that's what he's basically telling you. He's telling you that he doesn't know how the game is played. And... I mean, you want that guy on the, on the opponent team. You want that guy to be that cruiser that rushes out into the open, instantly dies and gives your team an advantage. Let me show you guys my recommended build for the Mogami. As usual, let me start with the equipment. Now on the Mogami, I do prefer the 155mm guns over the 203mm guns. It's important to note that you lose basically a third of your guns when you upgrade. I, I say upgrade with quotation marks because you go from 15 guns to 10 guns. Your actual HEDPM falls something like from 234,000 to I think 132. So you're basically having your DPM when you get this upgrade. So Mogami, in my opinion, has always shined with 155. Note that because the caliber is 155 as well, if you run IFHE, you get that magical 38mm pen. Whereas uh, ships that have um, 152 millimeters and they run IFHE, well, they usually only reach 37 millimeters. So having that slight edge in caliber is actually very significant on the Mogami. Especially since, well, many ships that you face, uh, for example, sorry about my phone, many ships that you face, for example, uh, the American battleships, they tend to have 38mm deck armor. Right. Anyways, moving on to the actual uh, build itself, uh, now that I've done justifying it. Uh, sea hull, torpedoes, faster engine, everything else just you upgrade. Uh, turret and torpedo survival, 
Hydro duration, since you do want to be running Hydro, the defensive AA is a very weak consumable, and not to mention your AA is complete garbage tier. Uh, still better than Belfast's AA though, so, well, I think they're kind of equal. Both, basically both useless. Faster turret traverse. Being able to run the turret traverse has actually helped alleviate one of the great weaknesses of the Mogami, and that is the really poor turret traverse. In the past, you always ran better dispersion. These days, I run turret traverse because I like being able to quickly flip my guns around when I'm repositioning reposi my ship. And as you probably saw that game, I like to reposition quite a lot to find that optimal position where I can farm damage. Faster acceleration and faster rudder shift. Note that you can run concealment, and I don't think it's a bad choice. I think concealment Mogami is perfectly viable. I think on EU actually I run concealment, and on Russia I run rudder shift. It's entirely up to your playstyle. But I do say that if you do run this, then you get a pretty hilarious 4.3 second rudder shift. Um, we combine with the speed and the turning circle, making the Mogami very agile indeed. In fact, if you go back and look at the way I was turning out to use all my guns on the Venezia, and then he shot me and I still managed to turn in an angle in time and that's because the rudder shift is so ridiculously fast. It is quite fun to play it using this. Captain build wise, the weave captain since chat loves this captain. Priority target, I would say probably go last stand first. Mogami's rudder breaks so so very easily and, you do, and the engine kind of breaks pretty easily as well. Overall last stand is just too good to overlook. Follow it up with Demolition Expert, and I would say get IFHG pretty early. I actually like IFHG, even with the nerfs to the fire chance, with the flags and this you only get an 8% fire chance, but the raw damage output is just so absurd with this many guns that I, I, I really really prefer it. If not, you can get Concealment Expert first, that's okay as well. You do want to get Adrenaline Rush as soon as possible uh, and Expert Marksman once again because of that poor turret verse. Expert Loader is nice for those few situations where ships are giving you a lot of broadside at close range, where battleships uh, can be farmed quite well by AP and of course uh, if cruisers give you too much broadside no reason and not to AP them. So don't get too stuck on the HE even if the last game was a lot of farming nodes and ships because then you obviously want to be using a cheap flag wise fire chance pretty straightforward fire and flood chance uh, improve your speed consumable usage not really that important on this thing i run detonation flag just for the sake i wanted to make video uh, and i don't really like the rng factor of detonating a flag kind of useless as well um, i run it because i have a lot of them but there are better choices well I mean, there's not a whole lot of choices left, but once again, the AA is so meager. The important flags are the fire and flood chance, speed, and maybe fire and detonation. The rest, whatever. Regardless, that was my Mogami guide on, or example on positioning and how I like to play it. And I do find the Mogami to be a very powerful ship, and there's a... Uh, and no reason why you can't have success in it, even to this day. Carriers, of course, makes it much, much harder because then whenever you position behind islands, you have to take into account the risk of planes showing up and spotting you, which will once again force you to open water gunboat or to disengage. In those cases, especially, I find a rudder shift to be better because if you want to be shooting in the open, you also want to be able to dodge more effectively. Right, next up, we will have the Brindisi and the way you can play the Italian cruisers. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you guys next time.